The project on security began in this room when I held a conference uh, with the Poetics and Theory Institute uh, together with Jacques and, and Michelle Lowry, who was here at the time. So I feel that this is a perfect uh, ring composition to bring the, the celebration of the book's uh, publication back here in this very room. And I'm especially grateful to Emily, who goaded me into actually writing the book um, over, over a late afternoon wine. Uh, so thank you, Emily, again for that initial, initial uh, push uh, for doing that. I, my, our house went on fire on Sunday, so I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from a, a, a slightly, um, slightly warped sense of security right now. Uh, the dryer subsequently found out that it was recalled, um, had a part in the washing machine. It was a stackable washer dryer, and it ignited the gas line, spewing flames out of the back. Um, fortunately, contained to the laundry room, we have a mini schnauzer um, who likes to still mark his territory. So I keep all the doors closed, and now I'm grateful that he was such a bad boy because precisely because I had all the doors closed, the fire was fairly contained. It's a lot of smoke damage. We tore down a bunch of ceilings and walls yesterday, but um, I was um, happy to be able to come here. And I think the insecurity of your house burning up puts me in a good position now to speak about security, so I'll try my best. Essentially, the, the project stemmed from the astonishment that I'm sure all of us feel uh, concerning the ubiquity of the term. I mean, security uh, is basically encountered everywhere we look, um, and it has any number of qualifiers, homeland security, uh, national security, um, mortgage securities, debt security, and so on and so forth, PIN numbers and so on, that I wanted to reflect a little bit on the overuse or abuse of this term security. And I focused, of course, on the etymology, which is very curious, and it, it leads and opens on to a very interesting semantic career. Um, the key term is cura. Uh, cura is concern or care. It could be fear or anxiety. And the se prefix means that you are removed from that concern. You're removed from fear. You're removed from anxiety. You're removed from worry. You are essentially carefree, but of course also implicitly careless. That in removing care, we become negligent. We become somehow um, apathetic. We no longer care who cares. And with care gone, we may be secure, but we're no longer concerned for each other. And I started to reflect in this direction on what would be a careful approach. And I happened upon uh, philology because philology always prided itself on a certain kind of care. It works cum cura, not se cura. It works with care and interrogates the term through this history, a history which is riddled with um, lots of pejorative usages. For Augustine, securitas is a bad word. It means you're not devoting enough care to scripture. Martin Luther famously in one of his sermons says, nihil es pestilentius securitate. Nothing is more pestilential than security. Security is a plague that, that robs you of the concern that would lead to your salvation. Securitas is not salvus, it's not salvation. Salvus is the safety that one can enjoy, but security is something entirely different. It's usually when we give our care over to institutions. Um, today, give it over to technologies, taking off our shoes, electronically recording our fingerprints in order to arrive at some sense of security, but it's all theater. It's it's all there to make us feel somewhat more complacent, but the apathy and the indifference and the negligence become these corollary uh, political issues that need to be addressed. Hyginus, um, one of the great fable uh, recorders in uh, classical Rome, has, uh, has a, a story about Cura, a personification of Cura. She's walking along a river. This is a beloved story of Hans Blumenberg, who wrote a small little book about uh, care crossing the river, Die Sorge geht über den Fluss. And basically, Cura uh, sees some muddy clay. She forms a figure, and she wants to animate it with a soul. Jupiter is passing by. She asks Jupiter to breathe life into this clay figure. Jupiter can do this, and he does so willingly. And then Cora says, great, now I'll name the figure after myself. And Jupiter says, wait, um, I gave it life. It should be named after me. When all of a sudden, the Earth emerges, um, Terra comes up, and she says, 
I'm the one who gave it its body. It belongs to me. Um, and so Jupiter and Earth are fighting. Who should be uh, the name giver? Kura is left off to the side as this dispute. It's a philological dispute. It's about a name until Saturn emerges as judge. And Saturn says, this is how we settle it. When the figure dies, the soul, the invisible, immortal part of this figure, will return to Jupiter because Jupiter gave it its soul. And when it dies, the body will go back to the earth because that's where the body came from. But for as long as this figure lives, he will live cum cura. He will live with concern. In other words, implicitly what the fable says is that security, securitas, being removed from this care, being removed from anxieties and removed from worry and contingency is only possible post-mortem. It's only possible in the invisible stability of an eternal Olympian world or in the um, deathly stillness of the grave. But as long as we live, we are with this concern, with this anxiety. And that, that led me to think about the humanistic implications of um, security and how it robs us of a certain kind of um, engagement with in contingencies and so forth. In the Greek tradition, it's entirely different because the main term is asphalia, um, a, the alpha privative negating sphalein. Uh, sphalein is a very interesting verb. It, it first comes up in Pindar. Are you going to throw things at me yet? OK. Um, so you, can, you should correct me, Status. Sphalein in Pindar, it's related to falida. In, um, in Latin, right, to fall or fail. But sfalein is from wrestling when you cause your opponent to stumble. Um, and to fall, when you negate that threat of falling, you have asphalia or the asphalt, that smooth surface that you could walk over as you coast through the city, um, not fearing for um, stumbling or tripping on the sidewalk, on the pavement. Um, what's remarkable is how Aristotle uses the term, and this is what brings us back to politics, even though I didn't want the book to be a book of political theory. Aristotle in the politics says, asphalia, that's the model for democracy. It's when opponents fight, when they wrestle with each other, but neither side ever stumbles. No side ever wins, but they wrestle perennially. They wrestle without causing another to fall. That's why we call democracy asphalia, um, security in that more um, optimistic ideal. But the term uh, continues uh, with sécurité and uh, uh, sécurité and sûreté in French. I'll just end with this anecdote. The great grammarian Claude Vaugelas, who was one of the founding members of the Académie Française, he hears everyone at the court using this new term, sécurité, but the grammarians don't like it because we already have sûreté, which is also from securitas, the, the circumflex over the U, as you know, um, basically marks the disappearance of that interval vocalic C. So sécurité, the K, gets marked out with the circumflex until Vaugelas says, yes, but you know, sûreté is when you think you're safe and you really are. Sécurité is when you think you're safe and you may not be. And I love to think of this in a somewhat cratalist <laughs> version. Uh, I'm a little cratalist myself, but the, the sécurité as if the cura, the, the hard palatal K, of cura gets stuck in the throat almost. Se uite, and it's hard to swallow as you do in suite. I think I'm safe. I am se your, and that stumbling, that um, that phallic uh, moment where you trip on your words and your palate, especially when I try to speak French and I feel the sweat uh, coming up as I as I murder the language. Yet, if there's a French karma, I'm going to be doomed uh, for a long time. But 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 I, I think um, I, I try to follow stories like this um, and work through the, the long tradition where. It, the, the meaning of the term oscillates and complicates. Um, um, and for me, every time I, I, I read about security, the NSA or the new initiatives to uh, consolidate our security um, apparatus in, in the administration and so forth, I'm reminded of this long history that raises fresh <coughs> questions that makes us uh, be a little bit more careful about the language that we use and pause a little bit longer on that hard palatal cura that we all too easily strive to forget. Thank you.